Here we go. Welcome back to another episode of It's About Time. You guys know me, Jared, and of course my partner in crime, Big Johnson. Oh yeah, let's, let's, should we show him the shirt? Why not? You know what? Can you read it for me? Okay. Please? Well, well, no. I'm going to go on that side of the camera. Okay. And then you read it. Okay. Go. All right, I'll go, go on, on that side, side of the camera. camera. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right here. Okay. You read it. Uh, Big Johnson that? Contractors, he's sponsored by tonight. Yeah. We don't stop until you get drilled, nailed, and hammered. That's it. And I am uh, supporting the <laughs> Big Johnson Lifeguard Company tonight, which clearly states that uh, if you're going down, we're coming. So, hold on. Did I get a Oh. Q and A is tomorrow. Th thank you, Adam, for sending me is another tomorrow, text. Adam, okay, that's that's next episode. Uh, well, the first question is tonight. You know, I should th we should throw both of our wives in the pool tonight. Yeah, I'd love to give them chlorine. In. I know, right? Chlorine. So, what's on the wrist tonight? It is the trusty, always handy dandy. I know you guys probably can't see it, whatever it is, but you guys have seen it many times before. <laughs> Orient Monarch Power Reserve. Only runs about a half a second fast during the day and maybe a few seconds fast at night. Regulated better than my previous Rolex was, so we were just talking about that in the elevator ride on the way down. By the way, did we mention that we're in uh, Eatontown, Long Branch, New Jersey? Hence why we're by the pool. Yes, and by the pool at the Hilton Suites. Uh, Homewood. Homewood Suites. By Hilton. By Hilton. Uh, very nice, very nice place. And I am wearing, of course, since we're by the beach this weekend, I have the Corum that I usually love. He's on back on my wrist with the super lace. Throw it in the pool, would you? <laughs> Throw it in the pool. <laughs> Just as he said that. Get the splash. Is that all right? Me. I'm so, good like that. Very good. I am wearing my... By the way, what you have to do with the episode of me and my robe regulating the board? Regulating the board? Yeah, you never put that episode No, nope, that's the lost episode right now. We're still in terms of that's more like rated R. So Oh no, that's rated PG thirteen. Oh. We're still going PG thirteen. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. This nice. one's gonna be rated R pretty soon. We're getting there. With Big Johnson. Um, but let's go into tonight's episode topic. Uh, the topic we're gonna talk about tonight, which we said we were gonna touch on right before the QA's, is the quartz revolution. Okay. Uh, we have touched on this topic a couple of times in the series so far. Uh, never gone into depth about it. Uh, we, we could probably do like a thousand hours of footage on this one topic. Right. Okay. And right. easily it is because we're going to try to condense it tonight for you as much as we can. By the way, do you think the camera can hear us? I think they can. Good. They can definitely hear that splash that we just had. Okay. But that was you throwing in the watch. That's right. You wanted me to throw it down underneath, I think. <laughs> I know I can take it. My watch could take it too. Well, if it's going down, I'm coming. I don't know. So, what the hell does this say again? Oh, yeah. Uh, grab my buoy, Big John's lifeguard, and start stroking. <laughs> but outside of that, um, Listen, outside of the paddles. Yeah. Back to where we were. Wait, can you do that one again? That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's going to allow me to. <laughs> Wait, just do that one more time? <laughs> no. <laughs> one more time, please. <laughs> Anywho. Um, okay, so let's go to tonight's topic. Now, I, I mentioned a couple of episodes ago. Big Johnson? Yes, Big Johnson. That Rolex never used to be what it, used, it is that you know and love today, or that you know and hate today. Because either you love Rolex or you hate it. And the reason you hate it is because you can't afford one. And the reason you can't afford one is because what happened in the Quartz Revolution. That basically is our topic today. In the Quartz Revolution, like you said, the history of the Quartz Revolution, the Swiss actually developed Quartz. They actually created Points, but they sat on it. Right after World War II, they, the money wasn't in quartz technology and development quartz technology. It was all in, as you know, at that point, hand wine mechanics. Yeah, I mean, everything, especially up to like the 50s and 60s, was all hand wine. Nothing. It, like, automatics was really around, I think, the late 60s, maybe 70s. Right. Right. And, that's, well, and, and that's the one with the rotor, by the way. Right. And that's exactly when you saw the Swiss move over to tuning forks. Okay. Tuning fork technology. I have went, a trivia question for you. Who started the tuning fork? Uh, I guess Accutron. 
Which is by who? Which is by Bo. Yeah, okay. Bo so and Bo. That's my trivia question. Bo is was Swiss. Okay, back in the day. Now they did adopt the tuning forks. Everybody they. In the 50s and the 60s, they went to tuning forks. Everybody bought the active trot movement off both of them and then put their own stamp on it. Okay, so the 50s and the 60s, the Swiss were busy doing that. Meanwhile, it, it, it was unparalleled accuracy at the time, and nobody had ever seen it before. Right. Nobody had, had even heard of the technology. Before. Right. And meanwhile, when they were doing that, okay, the Japanese wanted to get their hands on the quartz technology because they wanted something cheaper in the market. I don't think that they had automatics at that time at all. They had no idea what it was. They were just again, they weren't even in the industry way right back then. And they were trying to get their hands on something that they could mass produce at a cheaper price. Hence, where the quartz technology came in. And once they got their hands on it, they made innovations that were selling for one tenth of the price. Okay? Hence, the quartz crisis. Right. And when the quartz crisis hit the market, at first it wasn't very popular. People didn't really know what to do with this. They were unsure about batteries. Well, and yeah, the, the like technology that. wasn't exactly perfected. Yeah, right. It was not perfected, and you didn't know if it was going to shock you. You didn't know if you could take it under the water. But once they perfected it and they marketed it correctly, they created a crisis. Now, in today's market, okay, it's a fun fact, 98% of the market is actually Japanese and Chinese. Okay, 2% is Swiss, but 50% of the market's profits are Swiss. And 50% is Japanese slash Chinese. You say to yourself, well, how do you only have 2% of the market if you have 50% of the revenue? That's a very good question. Well, that's that, how the quartz crisis, this was a result well, of the Let's think crisis. about all the watch group conglomerates that are out there compared to, there's not, the Japanese and the Chinese don't have the conglomerates. They just have the big companies or whatever it is. But they're not brought up, they're not under like one group or kind of, they're like, just like independents. Right. Whereas with the Swiss industry, there's probably like 10 different conglomerates, maybe even more. And they were formed because of the quartz right, But it also includes the conglomerates, the Rolex, the independence, everything. If I were to sell something to you for 30 bucks and all of a sudden somebody can sell it to you for free, that's a major problem. Oh, I'm definitely, you know, we're going to pull an atom, but we're going to go 30. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, a couple of people in Switzerland did say that. But, however, this is where the problem came in. You had so many Swiss watchmakers. Remember, I brought up Enacar. It's a perfect example of a Swiss watch, along with a lot of other Swiss watches you never even hear of today. But Enacar is a perfect example, one that got caught in the middle. All these watches work together. Rolex. Oh, I have a question. Do we have enough memory to shoot every show just on this one card? Yes. Okay. Four hours worth. So. And a car like Rolex and all these other Omega and Tag, Boyer and all these other, were all in like one big circle, all the Swiss market. Nobody really differentiated themselves. Not even the culture or Vacheron Constant. Well, they didn't have to. They didn't have to because they owned the market back then. However, when the quartz crisis hit, a lot of Swiss companies went bankrupt. If you didn't go bankrupt, you were bought out. And if you weren't bought out, you were Actually, really one of, one, of, one of the biggest mergers was with... Uh, uh, you know, most people don't realize this. I know we've knocked in the past, but I'm actually going to, I think it's kind of come a little bit of a long way, so I'm going to give it a, a little bit more of a nod tonight because it has to do with our uh, topic, uh, too. So, um, I, I have, you know, I, I think it's it's making a bit of a comeback, and it's starting to get impressive a little bit, and, you know, we can't just, I don't think we can just knock it anymore. No, it's um, definitely redesign. Yeah. Their watches, they redesign their look, their brand, their feel. Yeah, but, and but now, to... but now, let me ask you this question: Do you know how long they've been around for? What year they started? 1853, which is even older than uh, yeah, that's even older technically than Breitling, and I think even older than Rolex. Right. Okay. Right. Um. So. So now, you're wondering. You make well, me wondering. Well, 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 I was gonna say, you know what happened with that though? Nicholas Hayek. Um, this was going back, and I think in the 80s, that's when the Swatch Group was started. So so much with Omega, and that's when the Swatch Group really started to get built. And you have a lot of them. You have the Riker Group. Um, you have Riker, Rick, uh, Richmond, Group. LVMA, you have Swatch. the Omega Group. I'm, I'm sorry, the um, Bottle Group. You have a lot of different wow. groups that encompass a lot of different brands now. And it's, 
because of the quartz crisis. When all these brands got caught up, there wasn't enough money to go around because all this money that used to be in the Swiss industry, like I said, 98% siphoned off into the Japanese, and that's where you saw the rise of Seiko, you saw the rise of Casio, you saw the rise of, of um, Citizen. You saw all the rise of these, of these Orient, Actually, all I these think, Japanese wines. Actually, I think watches. Citizen, from what I understand, is the most massive produced watch and the most popular watch in the world. Probably. And Citizen. it's because of that. Now, all this money had left the Swiss market. Now, the problem is, how do you get it back? Okay, either you're bought out by one of these big groups that were formed to protect the Swiss industry, or you had to do something unique, which is what Rolex did. Okay, you, you say to yourself, how did Rolex, the older Rolexes, don't go for a lot of money? And they don't. The ones in the 1950s and 60s... Say, it, it really all depends. Well, they, but they really don't, because they weren't more than a couple hundred dollar watch, okay, back in the day. And you say to yourself, why are they so, you know, $10,000 now? Well, it's because of one thing and one thing only, marketing. Marketing changed Rolex's entire global appeal. It's okay? kind of like what Tiger was did for golf. Wait, and basically bit. what they said to themselves is, either I change my marketing image, the brands that survived and survived on their own, either when they say, you know what, I can't stay with the Seikos and the Casios and the citizens of the world. But I got to go up. They, they also don't have the capability because, you know, again, the marketing them the revenue, but they don't, they never really have the capability to produce the million to two million watches a year that no, Rolex does. and they don't need to, because what they do is, they do it by a couple different ways. Number one, they number their watches, okay, so they're numbered to a certain count, which makes things more rare. They, they do letters, they do numbers. Right, and they say, you know what, we're going to emphasize... Ha, by the way, do you guys like the breeze? Oh, good. You want to make sure. And they were say, we're going to emphasize our history, and we're going to make ourselves look more historic than all the other watch brands, and we're going to reinvent ourselves. And that's what Rolex did. In the 1970s, 1960s and 70s, they said to themselves, if we don't, we're going to go bankrupt, just like every other Swiss watch, because everybody was going over to the quartz revolution. And, and they're still the largest independent, right? Yes, they are. And they're brilliant in how they do it. And I don't think that's ever going to change. No, because Rolex marketed themselves with, and that's when you saw a Rolex all of a sudden. If you watch, if you look at Rolex's watches in the 50s, they don't have the crown. If you look at, you know, that wonderful crown symbol that they have, eh, that wasn't there in their early in their early days. They developed that during the Quartz Revolution, and that was brilliant because it showed that they were the king. And then they they presented their whole history and they marketed and actually, their whole history. Actually, their, their uh, oyster their prestige cost as much as you know. Oh yeah, and they said I mean, to themselves, I, yeah, they're very valuable. Listen, I'm going to go broke if I have if I have to sell a watch for three hundred dollars. But if I sell it for three thousand to thirty thousand, well, I don't need to sell as many. But I don't need to produce as many. Therefore, I can tell I can market myself to the celebrities. I can market myself to the kings and queens of the world. Somebody needs to be up in that space. I'm not going to compete with Casio. You know, but also they, I'm going they up. Were, they were producing a better quality gold in their watches. They're, and like that's exactly right. They then different. they started to use yeah. the one the, the 18 karat gold, like, 14 like, karat gold that you all know. Obviously, 16 stainless steel they're using. Um, that's correct. Yeah. So they they focused diamonds. They focused these big diamond yeah, dials. They were one of the first to do that. Yeah, that's right. They focused the gold and they focused platinum and they focused all because you know what? Somebody had to be in the luxury market. They said screw off. We're the best. You don't like it. Take a hike. And that's it, right. It's just like what we were talking about at Amazon. We were saying how what customer service used to be like. Nowadays, you get something. T tell the thing about Amazon, what you were saying earlier. Well, <laughs> it's very, it's very true. When yeah. you go shopping these days, if you go to Brookstone and you complain, uh, they used to bend over backwards for you. Now, you know, you complain, you say, "I want a refund." They're like, "Yeah, right. You were getting bought out by Amazon in three months anyway. What the hell do we care?" Okay. You go to Amazon and you say, "I want a refund." They go, "No, you're gonna like it or you're gonna love it because you have nowhere else to go." And that's basically what the quartz sure. revolution was like. Because they were saying, well, this is the industry now. And Rolex said, no, it isn't. Not for us. We're not going to play with you, Seiko. We're going upwards. And if you if you didn't go up, you went down. And that's exactly what happened to Enacar. And it's a lot, exactly and what now, happened with a lot of Was it a little bit of a gamble? Yes. But again, paid off because look at what was happening at the time. That's right. You so. didn't. They, it was a different gamble because most companies tried to compete with Seiko. And, and they couldn't because they never developed the, the technology, as I told you, that... Japanese and the, and the Chinese at that point had. So the Japanese were killing uh, the, the, even the American companies, the 
you know, the Hamiltons. Yeah, Hamilton the at the time. Yeah. Okay, um, they went bankrupt. Yeah, the Illinois Watch Company. Illinois the went out long before that, and yeah, you had other true. other companies that just went bankrupt because they couldn't. Waltham was another example. Well, well, well then they, then they had to uh, they buy themselves back out, and then they had to become Swiss. Yeah, you had a and lot then, of this. You know, so. Elgin, one of the oldest American brands, okay, went out. Same problem because they didn't have the technology to compete. People didn't want the the hand wine watches that you had to watch every day anymore. They wanted quartz that would last for a couple years before you had to change the battery. And what what Rolex did was two things: they went up, and they also made quartz watches for a, a period of time. They made them for a couple years, and then they said, "You know what? This sucks. That's not our game. We're going to go up even higher." So they went high, and people followed them there. Because somebody had to be there. Somebody had to represent the king. Somebody had to represent the top. I mean, like, I know, have the a, best. A lot of the other companies, like, you know, like, you know, uh, Zuzu Nakul was around and the Tech Philippe and stuff. But, but they did the same thing. But, but, but again, they were, and even, and still are, like, Rolex is here, but then they're up here. Right. Because they have even a better history than Rolex. And yeah. But they did the same thing. They only had a couple hundred dollar watches. My father got a, a, a La Culture, or a Zuzu Loco. Um, in, in the 1950s, 1960s, I asked him, how much did you pay for it? He goes, 150 bucks. Yeah, which is unheard. Nothing, okay? Now, today's par, that's, you know, probably five, six hundred dollars. It's okay. Oh, uh, yeah, but then you wouldn't be able to get something. Like no, no, but they went up, too. They had to. They knew with their history and technology that they could, they could charge it's those really prices. It's really only the companies, I think, that have the longest running history that kind of told everyone else, fuck you. And they were like, you know what, we're, we're going to make it. The companies that didn't have the history, they were like, all right, you know, we don't get a war. Maybe they couldn't produce the technology or whatever it was. So it was either eat or be eaten. Uh, it was a dog-eat-dog -dog world in the Ports Revolution. And, and, and companies that so, you see today are the ones that well, survived. I was going to say, the, the question nowadays is, you know, what do you think is going on with the industry now? I mean, I would personally say there's so much other shit out there. That people are like, you know, even they come in the watch store, they're like, you know, I, why should I spend all that money? Like, I just look down at my cell phone or like a Apple Smart Eye or whatever it is. And, you know, I, I can't disagree with it, but again, it all goes back to the history and, and the. Um, one of the, the reasons, yes, yeah, well, one of the reasons why I like the brand Horus so much is because they bring back that old fashioned look mm -hmm. of that 1950s, especially when you have. You know, you, you can really only appreciate. Are, are you know in a certain way and I mean listen at the end of the day an automatic mechanical or just a mechanical hand wind that's what watches clocks everything started off if it wasn't for that we wouldn't have had the quartz revolution and you don't have we, your we iPhones have had that you yeah, know we, and love today you, wouldn't, you probably wouldn't have your cell phone none of that have anything because the atomic clock the, was invented exactly. because of the watch and the clock comes and out of the for, watch industry. Yeah, yeah people I'm, don't realize you that. You wouldn't have any of that stuff without any of what we had back then. People in the day. say, was the quartz revolutionary good or not? Of course, it oh, was, it was good. good. It was good. Of course, it was good because it, it brought advance. It was evolutionary, and it changed brands. And some sometimes things have to die in order to pr to promote a further advancement. And a car had to die. And a car and a bunch of other brands had to die because if they didn't. But if it wasn't for them, nothing else would have went forward. Right. You remember them because of what they did, but some of them had to die. It's unfortunate that some of them had to die, but it, to advance. No, I'll, the I'll industry, tell you what the unfortunate part is all the shit that's coming on, like the Kickstarter and all this crap nowadays. You know, people, I gotta tell you something enough. You know, there, there's enough. I mean, you wanna keep creating watches, fine. But how, how are you going to differentiate yourself from everyone else out there? You know, that's what I think. That's what should die. Not a company like Enicar, but that's just my opinion. I have no agree. I, 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 I think Kickstarter is great for starting businesses. However, if you're starting the same business over and over and over, so yeah. how are you helping the industry? So yeah. What are you doing to differentiate yourself? Just like Jared said, what, what are you doing to move this forward? Except, you know, saying, oh, um... I, I have an FU watch. Uh, nobody came out with this before. Oh, look, it's uh, Big Johnson. It's got Big Johnson on the back. So, I mean, no, yeah. big deal. Okay, if, if you're not, get, and that's what you don't see is these companies today in the Swiss industry really are doing advancement. They are they are using different pieces, different hairsprings, different movements, different technology. Yeah, actually, I, I was researching the uh, Tissot a lot. Actually, I, I don't know if I told you, but I'm thinking about getting it. 
because I think it's just a cool... I, you know, I, I mean, listen, I, I know we've knocked in the past, but since working at the watch store, going through training, went to sew and everything else like that, they, they are a company with more history than you think. The watches of new, not older, but of new. I, I mean, silicone balance hairspring for watch. Okay, so... The Bilat, 80 hour power reserve, COSC certified, so it's a chronometer, silicone hairspring, 316 ounce stainless steel, sapphire crystal, quick set date, well under $1,000 retail. Not a second hand, retail. None of that would have happened without the quartz revolution. That's ridiculous. Without the quartz revolution. That's yep, exactly. Point. It all comes out of that. Now, tomorrow, we oh, are and coming for the back. next few days. And for the next few days, we are coming back to back to back. To uh, back. Yeah, you have not seen this yet. Oh, man, we are going to go finally. Thank <laughs> God it's finally here. I know, after, what, like six months? I six months like. of us yeah. promoting this shit. The finally, and showing our chests. Yes, it's finally here, yeah. the Q&A episode. Now, we're going to probably have three segments of this. We're going to have your online questions. We're going to have the phone yeah. questions. And we're going to have the in-person we're, questions. We're going to do anything and everything. This is the time where we are literally going to have fun with it. Hopefully you don't see exposed body parts on the beach. I don't know, you never know. Well, you may see a hairy generals from here and there. Oh, that's going to be bad. Yeah, Captain, Captain Hair. But outside of that, um, we're going to give it to you tomorrow. Finally, it's here. We're ready to, to, to celebrate and, the 4th and of July. Last, Wait until you see the fedora the I wear tomorrow. <laughs> and this is going to be fantastic. So, thank you everybody for joining Listen, us tonight. Guys, don't forget. Email us, subscribe. I know we got, I think, like one more subscriber. We're up to seven. Woohoo! <laughs> Listen, we do this because we love it. I don't care if we had a half a subscriber. Oh, Adam. Um, we do it because we love it. We want to interact with you guys. We want to answer any and every question. We want to educate you guys. We get educated ourselves. Um, but most importantly, we love watches. And for that, we love you too. So we'll see you tomorrow on our Q&A episode of It's, it's About, about time. time.